Hey everybody, it's Bob Harris, FootballDieHards.com senior editor. I am in Nashville, overlooking right now the War Memorial. You can't see it because the lighting is, out, is not very good, but over my shoulder from my hotel room. Um, covering the, the, the 2019 NFL Draft live for SiriusXM Fantasy Sports Radio. Uh, you can catch night two, I think 6 to 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and uh, Saturday, we'll be on all day live from Margaritaville. If you're in Nashville, come on down and say hi. Uh, we'll be there from 11 until 5 local time. So... Check it out. Listen to it on the radio. In the meantime, let's look at some of the things that happened day one. It was like not a huge surprise. The Cardinals made it happen. Tyler Murray was the number one pick overall in the 2019 NFL Draft. If you haven't been following along at home, this is, should come as no surprise. The team hired uh, Cliff Kingsbury as their head coach, a losing college coach who comes with the innovative air raid offense. And here they have Kyler Murray, a guy they feel like is... Uh, is going to be a game-changing player, a, uh, a, a tr- transcendent player, uh, you know, 5'10", very athletic, big arm, mobile, uh, ideally suited to Kingsbury's offense, and that's the thing. It's a scheme fit. Josh Rosen, last year's first-round pick, not sure what's going to happen to him, if he'll get traded or not. He did unfollow the team on his Instagram today, so can't blame him for being a little salty about this whole the way this whole thing is shaking out. In the meantime, Kyler Murray is going to be a fantasy prospect we're going to be interested in, right? Just that we've, we've seen the success some of the young quarterbacks have had. Baker Mayfield last year, uh, Pat Mahomes in his first year as starter is, a, is an obvious example of that as well. And kind of, I mean, I think people will liken uh, uh, Kyler Murray to Russell Wilson, you know, just very mobile, big arm. So uh, Lamar Jackson, very mobile. We'll see about his arm. We'll maybe find out about that. More, I'll talk about the Ravens draft first round pick in a little bit. But um, so yeah, so it's it's a big it's a big move for the Cardinals organization, a big shift, and uh, we'll see what becomes of Josh Rosen. Perhaps they will work out a trade for him, or perhaps they'll keep him around as insurance. They can do either one. Uh, they have a pretty big investment in him already. Uh, moving beyond that, uh, the big well fourth fourth pick overall, Oakland picking Cleveland Farrell, uh, edge rusher, was a bit of a surprise, but maybe shouldn't have been. Mike Mayock really liked him. And uh, maybe if he was being more talkative, we would have had a better idea where he was going to go. But number six, the New York Giants. The Giants had two picks in the first round, the sixth and the 17th. We kind of thought they wanted a quarterback. They did. They went number six overall. They took Daniel Jones from Duke. Big, smart, tough, um, but not, not necessarily uh, unanimously viewed as a high-end pick. And, uh, but the point, I think, in... in uh, in making this pick, they had the 6 and the 17. Well, if you're sold on this guy, and Dave Gettleman said he fell in love with him watching three series at the Senior Bowl, so there's that. But if you really, if you did fall in love with him, why would you wait to the 17th pick? Why take the chance? You have that 17th pick, just use the 6. So they got the 6. Fans were not pleased with this pick. Uh, Gettleman said that Jones could sit around for three years. Maybe they're committed to Eli Manning that long. Maybe they're not. Maybe we'll see Jones starting this year. Either way, it's not going to be one of the higher-end quarterbacks, certainly from a fantasy prospect. This offense in general will be Saquon Barkley-driven no matter who is under center. So we got that going for us. And uh, without Odell Beckham as a huge playmaking component, guys like Sterling Shepard, Evan Ingram, Golden Tate, who has uh, signed this offseason, become big players. Um, TJ Hawkinson went to the Detroit Lions with the eighth pick overall. It's a great pick. Detroit has a need. Uh, the regime in Detroit, Matt Patricia, Bob Quinn, the GM, uh, come from New England where they used a guy named Rob Gronkowski. The, uh, Hawkinson is not Rob Gronkowski, Iowa tight end, one of two Iowa tight ends selected, but he is a great blocker, a very physical player, and a very good receiver. So, uh, again, historically tight ends, not great as rookie, so that's something to watch, but this guy's going to get every opportunity. Uh, Dwayne Haskins was the next skill player picked um, by the Washington Redskins. He's a little salty. He thought he should have gone earlier. He's not going to be happy with the Giants for picking a quarterback ahead of him, and he gets to play them twice here. Look, I like Dwayne Haskins. Big guy. Uh, not the big mobile quarterback, but the big arm quarterback. Maybe the best thrower of this bunch that we've seen go. Uh, 70% completion percentage at Ohio State. Played in the pro-style offense. I think he's going to be, uh, I think he, I think he, uh, to me, he looks like he'll be a week one starter. We'll see how that plays out in the coming weeks. Uh, beyond that, Noah Fant went to the Denver Broncos. Not a surprise. Uh, Hawkinson's Iowa teammate. Look, uh, George Kittle came from Iowa. Dallas Clark came from Iowa. They have a long history of really good tight ends at Iowa. Uh, both of these guys are great players. Fant, more of a uh, athletic type, perceived as more athletic, not the blocker Hawkinson is, but he can still block and he's still very athletic and can catch. And 
We know Joe Flacco uh, had an affinity for his tight ends uh, during his days in Baltimore, whether it was Todd Heap, Dennis Pitt, or whatever. So got that going for him. Uh, followed that up with uh, Josh Jacobs going to Oakland in the, with the 24th pick over. That is not a surprise. That seemed to be the direction this was going. It's a great landing spot for Jacobs. It's a great fantasy landing spot uh, you know, for our purposes. It's a guy that should get a heavy workload. He's well-rounded. He can contribute as a receiver. He's a physical runner. So, obviously, the only running back that went off the board. Uh, so, that was interesting yesterday. And that was kind of expected. I didn't expect a ton of running backs to go off the board. Didn't expect a ton of wide receivers to go off the board. The first one was Marquise Brown, the 166-pounder out of Oklahoma. Played with Kyler Murray. Huge playmaker. Uh, the Ravens think he went to Baltimore. The Ravens think he will help Lamar Jackson. Look, you know, you can question whether Lamar Jackson is a great throwing quarterback, right? Because we haven't seen it. Uh, you know, he can throw, though. So uh, whether it's high-end throwing, we'll find out. But a guy like Marquise Brown, a playmaker that will help Jackson extend plays, is what the Baltimore Ravens wanted, and that's what they got. And so I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Uh, the other receiver who went on the day was Nikhil Harry, went to New England Patriots. Pretty good landing spot, right? I mean, look, if you're any player, what, what could you want more than landing on a successful winning organization. I think it's a great landing spot for him. Big physical receiver, something they need. They also need a red zone presence, right, without Rob Gronkowski, who retired this offseason. So Nikhil Harry is a big body guy who maybe can help them in that regard. And also at wide out, I mean, beyond Julian Edelman, they don't have a lot right now. Philip Dorsett, they don't have any of the big physical guys. And Josh Gordon, we don't know what his future is. So we've got that going for us. A couple other notes that just I thought were interesting. Some offensive line moves. Atlanta really short up their offensive line. I think that's going to be a big deal. It's something worth watching. Uh, Tom Brady obviously gets some help at wide receiver. Um, and uh, the Eagles, for the second year in a row, jump up and steal somebody's uh, prize. Uh, last year was Dallas Godert, the tight end. They jumped ahead of the Dallas Cowboys to draft him. This year they moved ahead of the Houston Texans to take Andre Dillard, the, tie, the offensive tackle. I uh, thought that was a very interesting move. Two years in a row, the Eagles uh, being sinister and uh, diabolical and jumping ahead of somebody. So we're moving into day two. Some of the players we're going to be watching. At quarterback Drew Locke is still there. Seems likely he'll go at some point. I like Will Greer. I think he's a player that's of great interest. Brett Ripien is also still available. A uh, guy that is widely thought of, Tyree Jackson, the Buffalo quarterback. Very big body, very fast guy, 6'7", 250 pounds. And he's got wheels. So we'll see where those guys go today. Also, the running back should be a very busy day for running backs. We've got guys like David Montgomery, uh, Jacobs, Alabama teammate Damian Harris, uh, Daryl Henderson, Miles Sanders. Guys like that are going to go. Uh, the wide receivers, there's still quite a few left. A.J. Brown, Hakeem Butler, D.K. Metcalf, the guy that we've all been waiting for, the huge physical freak, great speed, but maybe not all the route tree uh, that some of these other guys have. Uh, Debo Samuel's the guy I'm interested in. Miles Boykin, Boykin, Riley Ridley, Paris Campbell, there's a handful. Tight end, still a couple left. Irv Smith Jr. should be the first one off. Jay Sternberger is a guy that people are interested in as well. So, again, watch footballdiehards.com, the main page of the site. We've got our live track, that draft tracker going. We've got some news and views covering the skills players. So, Emil Cadillac's doing a great job on the tracker, and we've got pretty much all the information you need. I'll be trying to check in. You can listen to me on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio throughout all the coverage live. So, so uh, tune in, and I'll try and check in uh, via video as much as I can. Have a good one.